heard that I was a sinner and coming from my background. There's so much lostness in the world. There's so much the feeling of hopelessness and helplessness in the world. The answer for them is Christ. I was born in Malaysia in 1947. My family were idol worshippers. It was my duty, even though I was a boy, to serve the gods. And so without fail, every evening before we have our dinner, I would put jars in front of the idols. It was a big deal because we have idols for everything. My high school teacher invited me to an evangelistic meeting. That was the first time I heard about Christ. I heard that I was a sinner, and coming from my background, my father Allah was pretty good, you know. And then one night, I believe it was the prompting of the Holy Spirit, a thought came to my mind, and which said to me, if this God is true, the greatest sin in my life would be to deny that. That really got hold of me. And uh, the Lord convicted me of my sin. I went to all my, the idols and I said, this is the last time that I'm going to serve you. I have found a true God. And that was it. <laughs> I felt called to the ministry. I studied at uh, Hong Kong Baptist Seminary, which is also started by Southern Baptists, funded by Southern Baptists, and staffed by Southern Baptists. Had it not been for the Lord Moon offering, my life would have turned in a totally different direction. It's a gift that keeps on giving through the lives of people that are touched through the generosity of Southern Baptists. And I'm one of them, by the grace of God. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. Stand with me. I want to lead us with a, in a word of prayer before we uh, open up our mouths in praise and adoration and giving God all the glory. Amen. Welcome to this first Sunday of Advent. Today is, is a focus on hope. His hope, his hope is in Jesus. Amen. God's told us in his word. And so today we're going to focus on the hope that is in us if we've given our heart and life to Jesus. And uh, I pray that today would be a day that someone would give that, make that decision to give Jesus their heart. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you. We welcome you into this place. We invite you to meet with us. We open up our hearts. We open up our voices in praise and adoration and giving glory this morning to Jesus who is our hope and the glory that is ours through Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we thank you for what you're about to do in this time of worship as you engage our hearts, as you engage our spirits, may we be found receptive to that. May we not be thinking about anything else. Uh, God, I pray through your spirit right now, you just free our minds of uh, what we're going to do after worship, what we're going to do later today, that we may be totally focused on you and focused on how much you love us, focused on Christmas and what Christmas is really all about, what the point is of Christmas, because it's so easy for us to miss it, as we're going to talk about over the next several weeks, God. Open our eyes to what we need to do so that we don't miss the point of Christmas. We thank you for it. We thank you for the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. Minister to our hearts. May we have a divine ministry visitation from you, God, today. 
We pray it in the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. We're going to greet each other. 60 seconds. Go ahead. Move. Don't stand still. Move. Greet with one another. Handshake. Pat on the back. Hug. Show yourself friendly.
we prepare our hearts for the coming of Christmas for the return of Jesus how many of you are looking forward to the return of Jesus amen the long awaited Messiah they waited a long time for Jesus to come and then he showed up and only the shepherds showed up only the shepherds we're going to look at that this morning no one else showed up when Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, for thousands of years, the prophecies were that Jesus was going to come in the manger, going to be born in a manger in Bethlehem, and yet no one showed up except the shepherds. But today we're going to look at three who missed Christmas. But before we do, let me just remind you of a few things. Tonight we do prepare our hearts with the hanging of the green. And uh, we've not had a real good attendance with that, and I've been praying all week, God, you've got to get a hold of hearts and convince them that the hanging of the green is green service will get them ready and prepared for Advent to really celebrate what Advent is all about, the coming of Christ, a fresh and anew in our hearts and in our lives. Uh, some of us need to have a new encounter with Christmas. Amen? Some of us, it's become too rote. It's become too mundane. It's kind of just like we go through it and January gets here and it's over. And we just don't even take Jesus with us into the new year, which is what Christmas really is all about. And so I hope that you'll be here tonight as we prepare our hearts and prepare the sanctuary with uh, you decorating, helping us decorate the sanctuary at 5 o'clock. And then I uh, just want to remind you at the end of this service this morning, we encourage you to give. Uh, there is offering, There's envelopes for the... Uh, Lottie Moon International Christmas Offering. If you haven't picked up one of those, they're available out there in the foyer. Uh, at the end of the service, let me just encourage you to stop and give it, uh, drop your tithe and offering envelopes into the buckets at the end of the service as you leave today. God blesses a generous giver. Can I get an amen? Are you going to be a generous giver today and give to God's work here at Gallman Baptist Church and more importantly even that is to give as we're focusing this month on Lottie Moon Christmas offering for international missions. And each week you're going to be hearing a video, a testimony, some wonderful testimonies each and every week tonight and also with our candlelight service on December 18th that evening you'll be hearing a video as well. So uh, all that is to help you prepare yourself and be involved in Going on mission, being on mission. That's what we've been looking at in Acts. We're out of Acts, but we're going to be in two passages today. So first of all, turn to Luke chapter 2, the familiar passage. But again, don't go to it. Don't turn to it if you're going to look at it with the same old eyes. <laughs> Amen. We need to look at this with different eyes, with new eyes. We ask, we've been asking God, I hope you've been asking God to give you fresh eyes and a fresh heart to hear the story as if it was the very first time that you heard this story that, it, that God's given us in his word that Luke has recorded for us. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. But over the next three weeks, we're going to talk about we need Jesus to save Christmas. And you're like, what? What do we need Jesus to save Christmas from? Well, there are three things we're going to look at over, the next three, over today and the next two weeks of things that Jesus needs to save Christmas from in your life and my life. Today we're going to look at that we need Jesus to save Christmas from missing the point. Pointlessness. 
missing the point of Christmas. And so what are we going to do? We're going to look at that because it's all about what you do at Christmas and what I do at Christmas. It's interesting that in the United States of America, we celebrate two different Christmas celebrations. Did you know that? We celebrate two different Christmas celebrations. In fact, it's observed by millions of people at the same time, at the same place, and sometimes by the very same people. And you're probably one of them. The truth is, it often brings confusion into families in America, into believers' lives, and discomfort on both sides. So let's talk about that for a moment. You got those on this side that are celebrating Christ's birth, and they're all excited about celebrating Christ's birth, and, and, and the other side, you know, has got these traditions going on. They've got all these religious traditions going on, and many of you, that's what you have. You've got traditions going on in your home that you do week in, and, I mean, year in and year out, and so you've got these two groups, and uh, it's interesting to me with this kind of thing going on that this group over here, they kind of get a little upset with this group because we, they think this group is trying to force Jesus stuff on them. And then this group, this group, those that are into the Christ birth and the celebration of, the, of Christ being born, they kind of get upset with that group because they don't give any attention to the real reason for Christmas. Are you with me? So you got two different Christmas celebrations going on at the very same time. And so we want to look at that. I agree the holiday is a, a time to promote time with family. Just like this group over here, it emphasizes that. A time of giving for those in need, of giving to one another with gifts. A time for peace in the world. You believe that. I, as a believer, we share those things with this group as a part of this group. But here's the truth. When I think about these two celebrations, honestly, it is so easy for us, and especially Christians, probably more susceptible to missing the point of Christmas than those over here in some ways. We kind of straddle the fence. I don't know about you, but in my family growing up, I had one. I grew up in a religious family. I grew up in a family that went to church. We were in church every single time the doors were open. And so before I asked Christ in my life, I, I didn't know much about this part of the celebration of Christ, celebrating Christ. And so I had one foot over here. And then at age 13, I, had, I came to Jesus, became real in my life. And so in a sense, and it continued in my family, before I came to know Christ, we were all into these traditions. How many of you know what I'm talking about? all into these traditions that, that oftentimes we have trouble connecting them with Christ. That's what I want you to think about. We have these religious traditions in our, and that's the one way to celebrate Christmas that's going on in, our, in the United States. And we have a hard time linking it with the birth of Christ. And I, I, to be honest, I didn't grow up as a child. I, all, all I knew is I knew that we were going to, we were going to, uh, go out and chop down a tree, uh, not chop down, we were going to a, a, one of these farms, tree, I mean tree, where they sell trees on the side of the road, was what we did as a child, as a family, we'd go and get a tree and then bring it home and set it up, and then we would work together to decorate the tree, amen, that was a tradition, came a tradition every year that we did that, I knew that, um, that we would also, on Christmas Eve, we would have a big dinner, we would put this big old turkey out for everybody to gobble on to eat, excuse me, everybody to eat, and so that's a tradition that we had going on, how many of you relate to these traditions I'm talking about, and then of course, on Christmas Eve, my dad always liked to do a last minute shopping, and so he would take any of the children that he wanted to, that were willing to go, I didn't go most of the time, but the rest of my siblings, they, they kind of went along with dad, I was the rebellious one. But uh, they would go out Christmas shopping. I've told you the story where we had to go to Lynchburg, Virginia to get a stereo. He wanted to get a stereo for Mom for Christmas. And on the way, we had a horrible snowstorm. And I thought we weren't going to make it. They weren't, we, we weren't going to make it back home because I did go on that trip. We weren't going to make it back home, but we did. But so that tradition, I knew that was going to take place every year. 
that there was going to be dad taking some of us out for last minute shopping. I knew there was going to be gift wrapping going on the night before Christmas. I knew that was tradition. My mom with my sisters being very much involved in gift wrapping. I knew that we were going to open one gift. We were going to be told just one gift on Christmas Eve not on the night before Christmas amen and so that became a tradition in my family and then I knew on Christmas Day we would get up and and I of course before even Christmas Day I, I knew that I was going to put cookies and milk out for Santa Claus I knew I was going to do that that was every single year I did that I knew that was part of Christmas and so are you listening today and so in my family and very much probably like your family there are those traditions there are those events that we do but the issue became for me when I came to know Jesus Jesus was real in my life and I began to really grow in my relationship with Jesus but we continued to do all of these things and there was really no real linking together of Christ with all of these things and that's true in your family it's true in my family we can get caught up in both of the Christmas celebrations that go on in our country and we can miss the point of Christmas. Amen? We can so miss it. And so I want us to talk about that because it, it, when we straddle the fence, I mean, we know, I knew that Jesus was the incarnate Christ and I, I had my foot firmly in with Jesus, but also still my family continued into my teenage years to do all these things that I just mentioned and so I also knew those things but I didn't see the connection I didn't understand the connection between the two it was missing I was missing Christ in my Christmas we're going to look at three different individuals at the time that Jesus was born who missed Christ at Christmas they missed Christmas because of several things that we're going to highlight today. So let's look at that together. And, and the thing is, you know, I thought about this on our playlist. To give you an example, another example besides maybe the straddling the fence that we so tend to do between the two celebrations and really not celebrating Christ like we ought to. Uh, on our playlist, it's interesting to me, we hear the songs in the stores um, and we go from one to the other completely celebrating different holidays. Do you ever notice that? We can be uh, on our playlist. We've got joy to the world going, and then all of a sudden we go from joy to the world to have a holly jolly Christmas. Two different celebrations. Are you hearing me today? Two different celebrations. Or we go, or go hark the herald angels sing and trying to explain to a child what does born to give them a second birth mean. You ever tried to explain to a child that in that song? What does it mean to, that he's given us a second birth, Jesus? And I think our lives are like that. We bounce back and forth between the two celebrations, really not connected with the point of Christmas. I want to give you some simple reminders today that if you'll do them, we can still have all these traditions that you, that you do as a family, that you've grown up with all through your childhood, but at the same time celebrating the real purpose of Christmas. Christmas. If you'll do these simple things I'm going to suggest to you today, I can promise you that if you do them, it will help you to not forget the point of Christmas because it is so easy to forget the point. It is so easy to get caught up in the party going and the gift buying and all the food preparation, preparing food, and all the decorating and all the programs we go to, it is so easy to go through all that and then we pack up everything and January's here and we've missed Christmas. We've missed Christ. Amen? And so let's think about that for a moment. Let's read this together. I think, I think that Jeremy Myers said it so well. I don't know if he's kin to you, Jerry, but Jeremy Myers, he's written a great book in his book he shares the idea of missing Christmas is not a new concept even for those who were there in the physical presence of Jesus in Bethlehem and so today let's look at Luke those who were actually in Bethlehem I mean literally the long-awaited Messiah 
they've been waiting for thousands of years is finally there, literally on the doorstep of this first person we're going to read about, and the people begin to miss Jesus. Let's look at it. Stand with me for the reading of God's Word, beginning with verse 1. And let me encourage you to bring your Bible with you to church. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit can't speak to you if you don't have the Word open up in front of you? It's not going to speak to you off of that screen. The Holy Spirit will speak to you from the Word of God as you hold it open in front of your eyes. Amen? Can I get an amen? Bring your Word with you. Look at verse 1 in chapter 2. It says, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. You may be seated. May God help us to really have a fresh eye on this passage that we've heard so many times. If you've grown up in church, you've heard this read. You've read it yourself so many times. But well, let's look at it with fresh eyes and with a fresh heart today. I want you to notice the last word. What's the last word? There was no place for them where? In the inn. The inn. I don't know about you, me growing up in my family, we had multiple nativity scenes. Maybe that's true with your family. But if you think about it, there's lots of different nativity scenes. We're going to have one on the altar table tonight. Uh, and these, think about the, what's, who's in those nativity scenes. The ones that you have at your home, maybe at the office, maybe in a store you've seen them. Uh, maybe in the church. Uh, we got all different kinds of nativity scenes, but who's in them more that we focus on? We focus on who? Jesus, of course. We focus on Mary. We focus on Joseph. We fo focus on the shepherds. For, and, and for some, it's cows and sheep. And even wise men. I, I don't know why, because they didn't come for two years later. Wise men weren't there when Jesus was born. They came two years later, if you read your scriptures. But there is... One character who you do not see anywhere, and I'm going to kind of presume over the scriptures, you don't find it recorded in the scriptures. There's one person, you don't see him anywhere referenced that he was there. And who is that? The innkeeper. The innkeeper. Think about it for a moment. Mary and Joseph show up in Bethlehem along with all these others that have come into Bethlehem. Why? Because they had to come back to their hometown to register for the census and so they've all come in and they show up at this end the scripture says and there's no room and this is great i mean here is no room in this the innkeeper standing at the door and this greatly pregnant young woman pregnant with child is standing there before him and he wouldn't make room for them it wasn't even like you can have my bed or I'll, I'll let you sleep here on the floor in my living room area. Wasn't any of that. He could have rolled out a mat on the floor of his own home. But he didn't want to inconvenience himself. He wasn't open to it. So they leave. And we find this manger in the first century they go and find this manger and the manger in the first century was like a two room shelter kind of like a shack and actually one room where they slept they ate the living area everything they did in that room and then it was connected with another room where all the animals were kept where hay was put down and connecting the two rooms was a step and on the step were feeding troughs and so as they get to, this, get to this end here in Luke 2, I love the fact that only place in Scripture where manger is mentioned, do you know where that is? With the shepherds. Only place. Why? Because the shepherds knew that Jesus was going to be born because they knew the prophecy 
they knew that Jesus was going to be born in a trough, amen, in a feeding trough. They knew that. The Lamb of, Je Lamb of God, Jesus, was going to be born. And so it's interesting to me that the only place in Scripture that manger is used is with the shepherds when the angels came to the shepherds. And so you have this innkeeper. And let me just remind you, why did he miss the point of Christmas? That's point number one. He missed the point of Christmas. What caused him to miss it? It was because he was too busy with other things, perhaps. He's busy caring for his guest at his inn. Other things that an innkeeper does, cares for. And he wasn't an evil man. He was not an unloving man. He was not unsympathetic. He wasn't angry with them. He wasn't belligerent. He wasn't even indifferent. Here it is. He was just too busy. Let me remind you of a simple thing this Christmas. If you're not watchful, if you're not paying attention, if you're not intentional, you can miss the point of Christmas because of busyness. You can miss the point of Christmas because of busyness. Too many people are like that. Their lives are filled with busy things. Oh, yeah, they probably, they're good things, but their life is so full of all these busy, busy things that they miss the point of Christmas. Shopping, decorating, you've already started that, already been shopping, many of you. Many of you are already baking a lot. Going to be baking more as you get closer to Christmas Day. Going to parties, going to banquets, and par programs. And so you're busy. So busy that you may not have time for Christ himself. Let me give you the best advice I can give you for December of 2022. And really, it's the best advice for the whole year. Here it is. Slow down. Slow down. I've always seen some of you. Busy is the word to describe your life. Already. And we just started December. I can't imagine how busy you're going to be the closer you get to Christmas Day. But here's my greatest reminder for you today. Slow down. Slow down. We get so busy, we miss Christmas and Christ every day. Not just December, but every day of the year. What does that look like, Brother Dave? Well, let me just help you. When you sing carols, you sang carols just a minute ago, don't think about what you, where you're going to eat lunch afterwards or what you're going to be doing after you finish singing that song, but instead stop and think about the words. Every time you sing Christmas carols, stop and really think about the words and what those words actually are saying. Or when you listen to songs on your phone, maybe you need to just stop and think about what you're hearing on your, on your phone as you listen to those Christmas songs. Maybe as you unpack your nativity scenes, maybe you just need to stop and gather your family all around as you're unpacking the nativity scene and talk with your children, with your wife, your husband, talk together about what actually took place in that manger that night. That's how you can slow down. That's just a few examples just to take time out to stop and get caught up in the come on church the glorious awareness of the word became flesh wow you got to be intentional or you can go through all December and you've never spent time really focused on that that one thing right there the glorious awesomeness of the word became flesh here, I'm going to give you something real radical. Maybe, maybe uh, you would like to watch TV, all these movies, uh, The Grinch Stole Christmas and uh, all these Christmas Express and Solar, Polar Express and all these other Christmas movies. Well, here's something radical. Maybe turn off the TV. Don't look at these Hallmark Christmas shows and instead, crazy as it sounds, we read the Bible. <laughs> yeah. We read the Bible. We stop and we read together as a family. Maybe one week just unpack with your family John 1, 14. 
John 1, 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Maybe as a family you just unpack for a week, what is that verse saying to us? Maybe every single day in December you read the Advent devotionals. You're going to see them on our Facebook page starting tomorrow. A devotional that's going to be on there for you. You can get them any number of places. We're going to have them for our church on Facebook. Maybe every day read that Advent devotional. Run to the Word. Remind ourselves. Come on, church. Remind ourselves of the presence of the gifts of the presence of God who became flesh in your life and my life and the spiritual riches that have been given to us in Christ Jesus. So when we celebrate and we continue these Christmas traditions, we don't miss the point of Christmas. We don't miss it. And what is that point? Well, go to Matthew. Let's, let's look at another passage. Turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. It's the other passage that God's given us in his word. Matthew chapter 2 of the, of the really the visit of the Magi. Matthew, we're going to see two other persons who missed Christmas. Let me read it for us. Matthew 2, verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem not Bethlehem notice they came to Jerusalem saying where is he who has been born king of the Jews I mean they're talking to a king and saying where is the king do you grasp that where is the king born of the Jews for we saw his star when it rose and have come to what to worship him wow and when Herod the king heard this did he jump up and down with joy? No, he was troubled. Notice his reply. And all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes, all the people, the religious people, the Sunday school teachers, the scholars, the, the, uh, uh, the seminary professors, he gathered them all together. Look what it says. He inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And then they quoted, quoted Micah. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for this child. And when you have found him, bring me the word that I too may come and worship him. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Because he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He missed Christmas. And so let's talk about that. He missed the point. I mean, here they are, the Magi, the wisest people around him. They thought if a king was coming to be born in Judea, Judea, the place to find him would be in the royal palace. Of all places, surely that's where this child was going to be born. And so although they knew Jesus had been born in Bethlehem, they knew it. They knew the scriptures. They quoted it out of Micah. They knew what the scriptures said. They knew it. But two years earlier, they went instead to Jerusalem to Herod, appoint, and Herod, oh my goodness, appointed by the Romans to be king of the Jews, an evil, evil man, an evil ruler, killing his own family, killed his own two sons. But look at verse 2 again. Look what it says. Verse 2, they said, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And what was his response? Instead of, wow, that's amazing. Oh, the kingdom prophecies have been fulfilled. Oh, let's declare that today in the kingdom. The prophecies have been fulfilled. The king has come of, Ju of the Jews out of Ju uh, in Judea. 
a long-awaited Messiah. Oh, this is glorious. Was that his response? No. He, it says he was troubled. That word actually, commentators say, means agitated. He was stirred up. He was shaken up. In fact, some actually could say that it conveys the idea of total panic. He was in a panic mode. Why? He felt threatened. When he realized the Magi did not go and do what he told them to do, look at verse 16. Look at what it says in verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. And what did he do? He sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem in all the region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. And so he was, he was, why did he miss Christmas? What was the reason? Fear. No other reason. Fear. Jealous fear. Herod wasn't about to let this little child interfere with his career, his position, his plans, and his lifestyle. And we have so many in the world today are just like Herod. Some perhaps even here. That we don't, we're going to celebrate Christmas, but and we're going to get in all these parties and gift, gift sharing and eating a lot of good food and all those singing songs and all that stuff. But uh, I, don't, I don't want Jesus to become king of my life. I, I don't want Jesus to take control of my life. I don't want Jesus to rule in my life. No, I, I won't be happy with that. that. I don't know what Jesus would ask me to do. I'm afraid of what Jesus might do if I make him king of my life instead of me being the king. See, that's where Herod is. His selfishness, his pride, his egotism, his self-righteousness was keeping him from seeing who Jesus really was, that he was the long-awaited Messiah born in Bethlehem. There had been prophesied. And so many folks, just like Herod today, so often, I think about this, people are afraid of what Jesus might ask them to do. Let me just give you some what ifs. What if when people come over to your house this month, instead of making a big deal of the porky guy in the red suit, that you talked about Jesus? Oh, yeah, there'd be some uncomfortable conversations for sure. Amen? But what if you did that? You talked about, made a big deal about Jesus instead of the big, corky, porky guy in the red suit. Or what, what, if, what if people in your office, what if classmates, friends, neighbors, what if you told them the real reason that you celebrate Christmas? What really gets you all fired up? Not these traditions, but the real reason. Christmas. What if you spent your money somewhat differently this Christmas? What if you spent your money for those that are in need? Families that don't have even food on the table this Christmas. What if you spent your money differently? So often, what do we do? We fit Jesus into this neat little compartment reserved for Sunday morning. Oh, I'm going to bring you. Uh, Sonny, come on, Jesus. Come on with me to church. I'm going to take you out of my box. And, and then I go home. I'm going to put you back in the box. I'm going to go to work. No, I can't, I can't bring Jesus out at work. No, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what they're going to say if I say something about Jesus with uh, uh, coworkers sitting in the cubicle down from me or in the office next door. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, 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 I'm afraid of the impact. That would have on my career or my position or my treasures. See, too many people have the same attitude that Herod had. Do you see that? They want to be king of their own little kingdom, and they feel threatened by a baby born in a manger. It's not true that just then. It's true 2,000 years later. There are many that are afraid of a baby born in a manger, Jesus, who became uh, our Savior died on the cross for our sins and he wants to be the king in your life and we don't want him to be king. We don't want him to rule. We got our own kingdom. We got it all taken care of. We know what we need to do. 
we know where we need to go we're in charge of all that we're happy with what we got going on in our life we don't need jesus we're because we're afraid it's fear is the issue amen fear is the issue what's it going to be like if i let jesus have complete control of my life what's it going to be like if i have jesus completely in control of my friends i hang out with places i go things i watch on tv oh my am i starting to step on some toes holy spirit is what if I allow Jesus to be king of every single area in my life, even my tongue, what I say about people negatively when they're not there to defend themselves? That's called gossip, by the way. What if I allow Jesus to be the king of my tongue, the king of my ears, king of my mouth, king of my feet, wherever I go? That's what Herod was afraid of and that he was going to have to give up his kingdom to another king, Jesus. Many people are afraid of that in their life. Maybe that's you today. You're afraid of what Jesus may do, what he may ask you to do in your life. What if Jesus was the king over your Christmas this year? What if Jesus was the king and the master over your life this year and the year coming up two simple reminders i gave you one slow down but here's another one that'll change your life this christmas maybe take that fear of what jesus may ask you to do take that fear of letting jesus have total control of your life to be your king to be on the throne of your heart not not dave on the throne or you on the throne but jesus on the throne of your life him totally controlling your life and you just surrendered and doing whatever he asked you to do, whatever he wants you to do, as you listen to him speak to you through his spirit. What's the second thing? Take that fear and trade it for another fear. <laughs> trade it. That's right. Trade that fear for the fear in Proverbs 14, 26. Listen to what God says to you today. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. How many of you want strong confidence? It says you can get it if you fear the Lord. Then it says, and his children will have a place of refuge. Parents, how many of you want your children to have a place of protection? Always. That comes through fearing the Lord, that verse is saying. So trade the fear of what Jesus may ask you to do with the trade it for this fear. What about Proverbs 19.23? Fear of the Lord leads to life. Oh, amen. How many of you want life? Yeah. Bringing security and protection from harm. Or what about Psalm 112.1? Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Oh my, there we go. If we just delight in obeying his commands, we're going to have joy. Amen? And fear the Lord. We will have joy. So take the fear of Jesus being in complete control of your life this Christmas ruling your life reorienting your priorities and trade it for the fear of the lord you know what that will do for your life and my life it will give you security it will give you satisfaction it will give you peace amen and let me add joy it will give you joy if you do that there's a third group real quick that missed christmas we see it in these verses four and five who was it look at four and five the religious missed christ i mean they're two miles from where jesus is born two miles did they go looking for jesus no nobody went looking for jesus but shepherds out in the field went looking for jesus that's crazy they knew the scriptures do you hear the text they knew the scriptures where the messiah was to be born doesn't that surprise you no, doesn't surprise me. You know what doesn't surprise me? Not that they didn't know the scriptures. God made it very clear. What astonishes me is that they did not go. And we're talking folks like you and I, religious people, church-going people. And they did not 
go. We look at them and say, well, I would have gone, Brother Dave. I, I surely would have gone if I'd have been there. I knew I would have camped in Bethlehem. I wouldn't even have left Bethlehem. I'd have made sure that I was not going to miss the coming of the Savior. But really, would you? If we're honest with ourselves, I have to be honest with myself. The prospect here is chilling. Even though these are spiritual leaders, how does it apply to your life? You're a spiritual leader. Parents, you're a spiritual leader over your children. Dad, you're a spiritual leader. Husbands, fathers, over your wife and over your children. Children, you can even, you're can even a spiritual leader because you can tell your, your friends about Jesus Christ. That makes you a spiritual leader. So all of us are spiritual leaders. Let me just get that out of the way. So all of us fit into this category that we're talking about here that, can, that missed Christmas, these religious leaders, the time that Jesus was born. Two miles. They wouldn't even go two miles, but guess what? How does that apply to us? We won't even take two steps to get in the Word of God. We won't even take two steps every day to open up the Word of God. We won't even take two steps to get on our knees every day and spend time in conversation with our Creator. We're like these religious leaders. And you're going to miss Christmas. The point of Christmas. Because I don't know, it disturbs me because Jesus is just as real today as He was then born in that manger in Bethlehem he lives in us today I mean even more so he lives in us God has given us the Holy Spirit God's given us his word we are part of the body of Christ we're, we're part of each other and yet we don't even want to take two minutes daily to get into his word to get into his throne room into his presence and spend time with him in conversation because we're too busy these religious people, they were God's chosen, and that's the problem. That was enough for them. They didn't care about Jesus being born. They, they, they were good. They thought their eternal security was in place. Who cares about having an actual relationship with Jesus, the Messiah? In other words, let me warn you in closing. If we're not careful... <laughs> This Christmas, we can become bored with Jesus. That's right. Because it's the same, same, same every year, and we can get, we can lose the, 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 the focus and the point of Christmas. We can become bored with Jesus. Who needs Jesus? I mean, who needs Jesus when we've got electronic devices? Who needs Jesus when we've got bank accounts? Who needs Jesus when I got my health? Who needs Jesus when I got my family? What do I need Jesus for? So what is the point of Christmas? What is the point of, of these, all these traditions, that trees and buying gifts and wrapping gifts and sharing gifts and having big old turkey dinners and meals and going and visiting with folks at Christmas? What's the point of all that we do at Christmas? Well, God's Word, Zephaniah 3, tells us let me close with that. I think it's going to be on the screen. You don't have to turn to it. Tells us why, why Christmas is all about. Listen to what God says through Zephaniah the prophet. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. Oh, wow. We could just stop there and go hallelujah, right? Right, church? He has cleared away your enemies. Oh, my goodness. God goes on. Not only has he taken away judgments against you because of sin, cleared away your enemies, look what else he says he's done for you and me. The king of Israel, the Lord, is where? In your midst. You shall never again fear evil. And I might add, you never again have to fear evil letting him be king of your life once you do that there's no fear that you're ever going to have, have to face when Jesus becomes the king of your life Jesus was born so that you and I could die so that he could die in our place 
Amen? And so that what? Because he died in our place, he paid the penalty for our sin, because of that, we can spend life with God forever and ever. Wow. Wow. He set us free, didn't he? Jesus. We oftentimes overlook the fact that Christmas, and we don't celebrate why he really did come. He came to die. Say that with me. Jesus came. Say it with me again. Jesus came to die. That's why Jesus came. He came to die in your place for your sin so that you can be forgiven, set free, and you can live with God forever and ever. So don't miss Christmas this year. How not? I suggest slow down. Stop being so busy. Slow down. Fear the Lord. Read the Word. Turn, run to the Word of God. Read the Word daily. Trade your busyness for worship of God and of Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for making it clear to us in these stories about the birth of Jesus that even in that day there were those that missed the point of Christmas. And for them, Christmas became meaningless. It became nothing but parties and lots of food eating and gift giving and traditions. But Christ was not the focus. I mean, the innkeeper, right there on his doorstep, and he missed Jesus. Herod didn't even go to check him out, so he missed Jesus. And then these religious folks that represent all of us didn't even care about Jesus because they were so self-satisfied and had so much pride going on in their lives. They felt like they had everything they needed, needed, so they didn't need your son Jesus. Oh, God. There are still those represent many people today, literally millions of people, and perhaps those here in this sanctuary today that are going to have all these traditions going on that their family does year in and year out but they're not going to connect it with the point of Christmas. Father, help them to do that through your spirit. Father, I pray for the one today that doesn't even, has not even allowed Jesus to take on being the king in their heart and life today, that today would be the day that they would open their heart up to Jesus and ask Jesus to come in and be their king, to come into their heart and be their Lord, their master, to come in and to save them from their sin. And for others of us, that as the altar is open in our time of invitation, that maybe we just need to come and, and get things right again with God and tell God that we, we've been guilty of, of missing the real point of Christmas. And we don't want to do that this year. We want, to, we want to make sure that in everything and in every way that we make Jesus the focus of all that we do as a family, individually and even as a church minister to our hearts Holy Spirit bring us to a place of decision that you're calling on us to make in Jesus name for his glory we pray and God's people said amen would you stand with me I will be down front to receive if you're here today and you need Jesus if you're here today and you need to want to join the church if you're here today and you want to get baptized, maybe you've received Jesus but you haven't been baptized, whatever you need to do today, uh, altar's open, I'll be down front. I'd love to uh, share with you, receive you as you come, as we sing. Of me sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore, Jesus
boys and go to Jesus. Step and baptism and become a part 
of this church family. So based on her profession of faith in Jesus as her Savior and Lord, are you willing today to support her decision with your love, your prayers, your encouragement? Say amen. 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 Of course, there's none that are going to say, no, I'm not going to do that. So we welcome you to our church family, Jesse, uh, based on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Uh, I'm going to ask her to just stay right here. Why don't you all just stay right here as we close? You be sure and stop by and just let them know, love on them, let them know how excited you are for her decision today uh, to make Jesus her Savior and her Lord. Stand with me. We're going to close just real quickly. Remind, we're going to sing a song as we close, but remind you, I, I didn't get to do Jonah this past week, so we're going to pick it back up this Wednesday in Chapter 3. Hope you'll join me for the Jonah study. And then, of course, tonight, invite you back for a wonderful service of Hanging on, of the Greens at 5 o'clock this evening. We're going to go to Sunday school in just a minute. Remind you to just drop your tithes and your offerings off uh, in the buckets as you leave today at the exits. And let's sing together. Uh, what a glorious day it's been. Amen. Oh, tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Oh, tell it on the mountain when Jesus Christ is born. Our shepherds keep their watching those island flocks by night. Everywhere, go tell it on the 